All right. Good afternoon, everyone. Dashihan Miller here from Warrior Concepts. You know, Warrior Concepts, we're taking the time-tested and proven uh, lessons from the ancient samurai and ninja families, bringing them forward into the 21st century so that you can create the kind of results you need to create the kind of life you've always dreamed of living, and of course, giving you the skills necessary to protect that life from anything that might threaten it. That's out of the way. No, it's not laundry day. I didn't forget my uniform, anything like that, right? Um, this is a street closed day at the school. Uh, we have two of these per month, right? Where students show up in what they would normally be wearing at work, school, gardening in the yard, whatever types of clothing they would find themselves in on a fairly regular basis, right? Uh, a couple of, uh, it was yesterday. Yesterday was a street closed day as well. So uh, one of my students came to class for the morning class and he came to class in the afternoon class or the evening class. And so in the morning he came in dressed in a suit, which is, how we would work or how we would uh, go to work. And in the evening, he came in in a polo and shorts. And so very different, right? Uh, loafers or smooth uh, soled shoes uh, for one class, sneakers for another class, that kind of thing, right? So uh, today, coincidentally, right? One of my uh, instructors, Shoshi Paul, that's his last name, not his first name. Our joke is he has three first names. Anyway, Shoshi Paul, uh, he teaches for me on Wednesdays and Thursdays and consistently over the last couple of weeks and probably going forward uh, another couple of weeks, right? Wednesdays have been uh, outdoor skills days, right? So there's a park less than a mile from, from the back door of the dojo. And so he has students meet there. And uh, if it's a regular uh, training day, they're in uniform, but sturdy shoes and street clothes. Well, you, again, wear what you would normally wear when you're outside, hiking, going to the park, whatever, right? And so, uh, right, they're going to they're gonna train that way. Really, really important stuff. And this is actually tied in with the topic of the day. We're talking about Kudai Dori. So for those of you who are in uh, Bujinkan, Ninjutsu, those kind of things, and you, you've been exposed to uh, different uh, concepts from different lineages, right? Uh, this, this is uh, actually on the scrolls of the Koto school, one of the nine schools that my teacher, uh, Hatsumi Sensei, uh, had Soke shipped to, right? Obviously, it's been passed on because he's retired. Um, but this is uh, something that is really, really critical to survival. But again, like a lot of other, uh, a lot of other concepts, right, is generally translated, usually not so well, right, creates bad limitations uh, or bad misunderstandings, right, and then kind of cripples uh, training, right. So uh, uh, a bunch of episodes ago, we did one on uke nagash, right, which is again is one of these things that's normally translated as something very, very simple, like blocking, right. But we ended up looking at what three. Three, four, no, not three. It was four or five different ways, right? That uke nagash is used, right? Uh, besides this idea of blocking, right? Same thing with the Kyushu, right? That's usually translated as pressure points. Mm -hmm. So anyway, at the, what I plan on doing once we get this whole thing edited is at the very end, we'll have a, uh, uh, a suggested video or whatever on the end card to take you to that uke nagash video if you haven't seen it. So you can get a general idea about that as well. And down in the description area, please, on all my videos, make sure you check the description area down there. We we put a, a butt ton of extra stuff down there. So I'll make sure there's links to the to the uh, Uke Nagash, to the Q Show, uh, those kind of things, right? Because we want to have a broader uh, a broader context, right, of the training, okay? And again, if you missed the, the last video I just posted on the three avenues, the three different ways that traditional Budo uh, is transmitted to a student. And the more of these that you can get, not only the deeper the experience, not only the greater the skill set, but just your potential just expands exponentially, right? So uh, we'll, we'll make sure some of these things are in there and all that and go from there, okay? Anyway, so this Kudai Dori, right? Kudai Dori, right? Kudai Dori. Dori means to catch or seize, okay? People often translate it as take. That's fine, whatever works in English, but it means to catch, seize, uh, trap, get a hold of, that kind of thing, right? Kudai means, uh, it can mean, um, it, it can be an aspect of space, right? Uh, but it, it typically points to like positioning, right? And it's relative, right? So the whole idea here is taking proper position, catching the proper space, that kind of idea, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start from where it's normally seen and show how that's a skew as well, right? And then uh, what we're going to do is kind of branch out. So this is part one of a two-part series, right? Kudai Dori is another one of these aspects that we, we could go on for weeks, but 
I want to get as much to you as possible, big picture kind of thing, and then cut you loose, right? And, you know, if you want more, you can always come to our Friday uh, virtual uh, classes and whatnot and, um, and go from there, right? So, and you know what? I have the wrong overlay up. That's not going to help very much at all because we're not on Kuden at the moment. Oopsies. Let's see. Let's change that. There we go. There's the there's the uh, Friday virtual training kind of thing. I know a bunch of folks like Jeffrey Fletcher and a bunch of other folks uh, come in on those things on a regular basis. So if you can make it, that'd be awesome. Uh, we're going to be doing obviously hands on. Right. So Friday virtual is the how to do some of the stuff that we're talking about here. Right. But again, we're going to be looking at two different perspectives just like we did with the Sanuch and, and a bunch of these other topics we've uh, we've uh, covered. And again, in the end card, there'll be a there'll be a link to the playlist for a bunch of these whiteboard Wednesdays. So you can get caught up if you need to. OK. All right. Uh, my goal is always to make my free content uh, better than everybody else's paid content. Right. It doesn't mean I'm giving everything away, but if I can give you a whole bunch of stuff and you can go about doing whatnot. And then if you need help, you know, we can always dive into it deeper, right? Make it happen faster, those kind of things, right? But I trust that all of you guys are smart enough to figure this out and, you know, take whatever amount of time it's going to take to do it, right? Anyway, so let's start on the Kotoryu scrolls, right? First scroll is called Kudaidori, okay? And what you're going to find are five Kamai names listed, okay? Please notice how I describe things. I choose my words very, very carefully, right? Communications is difficult in everyday life, in martial arts training, in Budo, Bujinkan Ninjutsu, Bujinkan Budo Taijutsu, whatever you want to call it, right? What we're talking about is, is very, very important, right? And getting your head wrapped around that thing. If you can't get your head wrapped around it or you make assumptions or whatever, the body's going to follow that thing. And it's either going to lead you down the right rabbit hole. So far, it's going to lead you where you need to go or it's going to lead you off on a freaking trail where you're going to end up nowhere close to where you want to be, right? But you might think you are because, you know, cognitive dissonance, ego has to figure out, shit, these things don't match up. Which one am I going to pick and then stand here and justify for the rest of my life and think everybody else is wrong? Whatever works for you, sweet pea. We're all grownups, right? Okay. So there are five kamai, right? There is migi sega no kamai. Oops. Be nice if I spelled even correctly Japanese, right? Migi Seigan. There is Hidari Seigan, right? There is, uh, oops, Hira Ichimonji no Kamai. Okay, there is uh, Hoko no Kamai. Hoko no kamai, sometimes also called hoi no kamai, right? Means something different, right? Um, and then five is bobi no kamai. This is not bobby, it's bobi, okay? Bobi no kamai, okay? So at first glance, looks pretty simple, right? Five kamai, not five kamai, okay? So first inner secret, Gokui, right, that we need to understand is that paper was at a premium, right? It's very, very expensive to make. It was handmade by specialists and you had to buy it. And then you had to make your own ink and all that kind of stuff. So you got crib notes, okay? This is pointing to things that the teacher has taught you, but it's a reminder. This is not, the scrolls are not an educational device, right? They're cliff notes, okay? So Migi Segan, Hidari Segan, there's a Gokui right here, right? And there's a whole bunch of other stuff embedded. We don't have time to go through all this stuff. So again, let's just focus in one place, right? Migi Segan, Hidari Segan, at first glance would look like, right? Migi Segan, right? Right side forward. Hidari Segan, left side forward. It would look that way, wouldn't it? Okay. And it's not that you can't not do it that way. Okay. But what if, right? What if there was a Hidari Migi Hira, Hidari Migi Hoko, Hidari Migi Bobi? Most people can see it as bo see Bobi being that way because it's a bladed kamai, right? But, right, Hidari uh, Hirichimonji, this is not the same as the Hirichimonji in uh, Kukishinden school. Kukishinden's Hirichimonji is the one most people are familiar with. Both feet are on the floor, okay? So I'll back up here a little bit longer, right? This kind of thing, right? The Koto Hirichimonji is like a forward Hicho, this way, 
Okay. So what if, right? But then what the hell are we talking about? Right? Migi Hidari, right? In past episodes, I've talked about the dragon and the tiger realm. Okay. These two realms to training, right? Migi is like the dragon realm. Hidari is like the tiger realm. Okay. Now in past episodes, I've talked about these things in two different kind of context, tiger, dragon, battlefield, society, two different skill sets for producing results, but battlefield dragon, I got control of the situation. I don't need a whole lot of things. Right. And so, uh, I, I'm, you know, can do pretty much whatever I want. Right. Tiger side of things, raw, animalistic, Rip this guy to shreds. I know all you tough guys are like, yeah, so that's that's the kind of training I want. Okay. Yeah, well, that's the kind of training that sends you to jail, too. But anyway, so Migi, right? This is controlled, right? I got everything handled, right? So I can use grace, I can use timing, I can use all that kind of stuff. My come on, it doesn't matter if I'm left side forward or right side forward, right? All the lessons that you get about what is a correct come on, right? It's the ideal, okay? Well, I'm not overwhelmed with stress and all that kind of crap, right? So it's easy to take that kind of thing up. I'm in control of the situation. Not I think I'm in control. I'm actually in control, okay? And your, your conscience tells you which one you are, whether ego wants to override that or not. It doesn't matter, right? So Migi Sagan, I'm in control. So to be graceful, move around like Hatsumi Sensei, all that kind of stuff, right? Hidari Seigan, not so much, okay? Hidari Seigan is more raw, right? Uh, Emotion-driven, okay? So in our curriculum, we teach all the Kamai first from the Hidari perspective, from the, from the tiger perspective. Not that it needs to be raw and animalistic, but it's emotion driven because we're talking about self-defense. Okay. We're not second degree, eighth degree, 15th degree black belts yet. Right. So, well, not all of us. Right. So we don't have that much control, right? It was probably a surprise attack. We might be, you know, fearing for wife and kids or whoever we're protecting and there's all this shit going on. Right. So if you have a chance to see the Koto Ryu uh, video that Hatsumi Sensei put out uh, through the Quest uh, series way back in the day, that might even have been video number one, right? Uh, when they go through these things, he explains it very, very well, right? Migi Segan, I'm going to do them both Hidari forward so that I screw with people's heads that think they have a fix on things, right? So Migi Segan, right? We've got a certain amount of weight on our back leg. We've got perfect alignment. Right. We've got all this control out here. I will control you with my lead hand and my heart, that kind of thing. Right. Then they show Hidari Sagan. Right. As a matter of fact, Seno Sensei is showing Hidari Sagan. Right. And I miss him a lot. He passed uh, not too long ago. Uh, Hidari Sagan. Right. So now you got this thing where it's way stretched back and this kind of thing. Right. Because you're having a no shit moment. OK. It's an overwhelm, that kind of thing. Right. So. Both of these point to a certain type of kudaidori, right? And we're going to talk about these different aspects because, again, people just tend to look at kamai, taking proper position. And, and what they really do is they limit it to something we talked about just an episode or three ago, right? Um, the, the taisabaki, right? The correct positioning and all that kind of stuff. So they're related, but the way most people associate with these things, right? They're leaving so much training and so much potential and ability on the table, and I'm not here to re-educate the masses, but for people saying that they want to master something, it's amazing how many people stop at the entrance to the gate. Like they just they took a step past it and they're having that, that they bought their ticket. Right. So they're having that martial arts experience, kind of like that day at the amusement park. Right. And then that's that's it. Right. Please hold on to the bar and whatever. Right. Right. So if we take this idea of there is an ideal because I'm in control of the situation. And we take this idea, right? And there's a way to, there's a way to position myself correctly to an attacker because of that. And then we take this kind of situation where it's raw, it's emotional. I've been, I've been startled, whatever, right? I've got other things or people that I'm worried about and a whole bunch of other things we're going to be listing here in a minute, right? If, if we take that into account, 
then it's not about just this left and right Hirichimonji. It's what does Hirichimonji look like when we're in control of a situation, right? Bring it on, motherfucker, right? And what's it like when, right? What does Hoko Nukumai look like, right? When we're in a situation where we're in that, whatever you put in here, I'm going to crush it, right? Or what does it look like when he's got a blade or whatever, and we're modifying things or whatever, and we're trying to adapt to this emotional kind of thing that's going on. So today's class is going to be more about external factors that Kudai Duty is related to. Episode two of two, next week, we're going to take a look at internal factors because you need to position correctly to the situation based on those things as well. Okay. So Bobby, same thing, right? Bobby, right? Bobby conventionally is translated as defensive kamai, right? Defensive kamai, right? So from a right hand position, right? I'm like right here. And the feeling is from, from a right Bobby, right? Drawing a line in the sand. Okay. And the whole idea is here, if you cross the line, I'm going to kill you. Okay. But from a left Bobby no kamai kind of, I added the E on there, right? Okay. Uh, left side, Bobi no Kamai, right? What we need to do is dive into the kanji used to write Bobi, Bobi, right? The translation of those kanji means to prepare for an explosion. Now that's going to create a different feel than I'm in control, draw a line in the sand, and I'm looking at you like, cross it, you die very different. Very different, right? Okay. So not telling you need to train this way, but what I am suggesting is that people take a snapshot of something, they make a freaking assumption, and then they go, uh, oh, Kotoryu has like five kamai, dude, and like, so it's me. And then they just quote the list, okay? Ink was at a premium, paper was at a premium, not just because it was rare, but because it was freaking expensive, right? So what if, right, what if in the Shoden no Maki, Jodiaktu no Maki, right? The first level scrolls going into something, that was actually the highest level and the most important stuff that you needed to know so you could translate the stuff that was going to come after it, okay? What if that told you that there were more than five coming? What if? I don't know. It's up to you, okay? So anyway, just a thought, okay? So we're going to relate to them a certain way. There's a certain type of position, right? Again, it's related to Tai Sabaki, but only on a only on a um, only on a, a physical level, right? So is 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 Daishi Han Miller saying that Kudai Dori isn't taking up proper kamai? No, of course it is, right? Is he saying that it's not taking up proper kamai based on his positioning and his reach and things? No, of course not. It is, right? But there's a lot more, like a, like one of those uh, infomercials, right? But wait, there's more, okay? So, oh, just in case you didn't know this or you first encountered me for the first time, right? I am a love me or hate me kind of guy. If you're on the fence about me, give me half a second. I'm going to push, right? So my goofy nature, if my serious nature, if my asshole nature, whatever, right? All these different aspects that make us us. If that bothers you, click the damn button and go somewhere else to somebody who's going to please you, regardless of what kind of lessons they're giving you. Okay? I'm cool with that. Right? Anyway. All right. So we're going to take a look at this on a couple of different levels. I'll hint at some others. We're going to focus on one particularly today, or this week, right? So Friday's virtual uh, training, we're going to focus on uh, one of these, and then uh, we'll go from there, right? So uh, just off the top of my head, we're going to throw out five of them, okay? So there is a physical aspect to Kudai Dori, okay? There is an environmental aspect to Kudai Dori, right? Well, let's say, isn't that physical? Just follow along, okay? There is a mental aspect of Kudai Dori. There is an emotional aspect of Kudai Dori. There is a spiritual, I don't mean religious, aspect to Kudai Dori. There's five to start with, right? But if you're actually applying this stuff across your life, 
there's a financial aspect of, uh, to Kudai Dori. There's a relationship establishment navigation aspect to Kudai Dori, right? There's how we position ourselves uh, relative to the concept and our uh, movement towards success and whatnot, right? Because if we have this internal thing where, you know, I, I, I'm always doing self-deprecating humor and I'm always calling myself names or I, I'm worried that other people are judging me and all that. And it really comes from a low self-esteem thing on my side because I don't worry about other people judging me, right? That's their problem, not mine, right? If they knew me, well, maybe they'd still think the same, but probably not, right? Okay, so uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to position myself relative to all of these things based on a whole bunch of different factors, okay? So physical aspect, right? <clears throat> this is where the Taisabaki comes in, right? So I'm uh, going to position myself relative to uh, his position. I'm going to position myself relative to his reach and length, right? I'm going to uh, position myself relative to uh, weapons, his or mine. Okay. You get the idea, right? Okay. So these are attachments. Okay. These are obstacles, things like that. Right. Okay. Things that are attached to here. I it's about our bodies. Okay. Angle, the angle of the attack that's coming in. Right. Uh, it's at high, low, those kind of things. Right. Go back and look at the, uh, the, is a punch really a punch where we talk about the 81, uh, different ways to throw any given fist because of the four different uh, variables and the, the the three aspects in each of those variables, right? So anyway, um, so it's position, it's reach, it's weapons, it's you know, all those kind of things, right? It's what most people tend to get introduced to as an extension of what? Come I. So we're still stuck in friggin' come I, right? Let's talk about environmental, okay? Street closed day. I'm wearing shorts. I'm wearing loafers. I'm wearing a, a you know, a, a golf shirt as opposed to a regular T-shirt, right? What the hell do those things have to do with anything? Well, if you get a hold of me, there's a certain give that my uniform does not have, right? A winter coat's going to be different. Somebody wearing gloves, me wearing gloves or whatever. Certain things are going to be conducive, non-conducive, those kind of things. So what I do, not just the position of my body, come I, but how I grab, how I strike, how I interact with his body, from what angles, those kind of things, all of those. That's all physical, okay? But environmental, well, environmental starts to extend out, okay? Because it's not glued to me. My clothing is not glued to me, right? His clothing, my clothing, conducive or non-conducive, helpful or not, based on the ground surface, so the shoes we're wearing, right? Um, when I was a military policeman in the Army a long, long time ago, uh, I, I apprehended somebody who was drunk and disorderly, brought him back to the MP station. And actually, see, he wasn't even the guy I was there for, right? He decided he was going to intercede and be an ass. And he, you know, multiple lines got crossed. Anyway, the guy's dra dressed like Dapper Dan, if you know what I mean, right? He's got his boiler hat. He's got his suit and all that. He's got his nice, you know, GQ dress shoes and all that. Put him into a, into a search uh, position against the wall. And I have to call a partner over to put his boot, his shoe, behind this guy's feet because he's in smooth dress shoes on a tile floor. And when I put people into a search position, it's way extended because you need to be in an uncomfortable position where you can't come off that wall to attack me without falling on your face and sliding your nose off on the brick wall on the way down. Anybody that does anything less than that from a law enforcement, security, or military position is just setting themselves up to lose, okay? As a matter of fact, there, we ended up getting this new provost marshal. He's basically the, the equivalent of a police chief. He came in, and he was embarrassing a lot of my peers because he had this bet that they could not put him into a search position on the wall, and he would not be able to come off the wall disarm their weapon from its holster, and if you were a bad guy, shoot them. And I walked in, and they're doing this thing, and I went, what the hell's going on? And he, they told me the bet, and I said, I'll take that bet. I put him into that search position and kept having him back up to where I had to put my boot behind his, his, his boot, and he conceded because he was in a position that if he moved even one hand, he was going to fall. 
you can't get at me or my weapons if I have you in a position. That's kudai dori. How I position me, but also how I position him. Okay? So environmentally, clothing, helping, inhibiting, whatever, right? It's also, uh, again, we talked about the ground surface. We've got indoor-outdoor carpeting on, a, on a, a concrete slab in this dojo, right? But Outdoor Skills Day, shows you Paul's going to have everybody out, right? They're either going to be on a, on a covered patio, gazebo, pagoda, whatever you want to call it, right? They're either there or they're going to be on this dirt walking path or there's going to be roots coming up out of the ground and all kinds of things because they're in this big open park area, right? And he'll move them around, right? Grass, divots in the ground, those kind of things, right? Can you move across those things easily, right? Uh, uh, when I go on vacation and I go to the shore, I go to the beach, right? I get up before everybody else does and I go down to the beach and I do my Sanchino Kamai on the beach, in the sand, right? In bare feet, right? You learn very, very quickly how to move yourself much more lightly so that you're not sinking and feeling like you're in quicksand every time you move, right? But if you're not doing this, what, are you, are you just assuming that when you're attacked, you're going to be attacked in your cool pajamas in a, you know, in a sterile environment, right? What kind of obstacles, right? Look around your house. What if you're attacked in your house, okay? Coffee table, other furniture, right? Your cat running under your feet, right? Your kid clinging onto your leg, whatever, right? What time of day is it, okay? Cloudy, nighttime, raining, whatever. It all changes everything. Kurai Dori takes into account all of these things, right? Weather, clothing, what else? Uh, ground surface, right? Um, oh, light sources, right? Light sources. Where's the sun in the sky, right? Street lamps, those kind of things, right? Positioning yourself relative to the light source so he doesn't have it over his freaking shoulder, over his head, and you're getting blinded. Okay? One aspect of Kurai Dori is always, always, always try to get the, the bright light source behind your back. It turns you into a black silhouette and lights him up. Okay? So now, and then light on the sky and all those kind of things, right? It's not always possible in big cities, but if you're in parking lots or in certain areas, there's shadows between buildings and all that kind of stuff, right? You want to get as low as possible. So what you end up doing is silhouetting some part of his body against the horizon in the night sky so you can see where he is, but you virtually disappear into the ground, okay? That's some cool shit. That's kudai dori, right? So it's also related to stealth, but it's kudai dori, right? How do I position myself, not just kamai to kamai or kamai to body position or whatever, but other shit that's going on, okay? All of those things change, right? Things can be great moving around, you're training in your yard and everything's great. And some jack wagon jumps you because you're having a, a you know a picnic in your yard. And But it's been raining or the kids have been on the slip and slide or you're next to the pool. And now everything is either muddy or wet or whatever. And it's slippery or you're in different shoes or whatever. Right. Next thing you know, you step back into come on, you split your groin open and you're a different gender type. Okay? And not because you chose it. Right. Anyway. Right. The other aspect, mental. Where are you in your head? right? Where are you about uh, this person, right? If they're a family member that you love and they're going off the deep end and they're snapping, do you really think that you're going to associate with them the way you think you're going to handle any attacker that's coming at you, right? I'll snap that motherfucker. But really? 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 Okay. And Helen, who's, you know, the love of your life, right? Outside of your partner, right? Um, just got new meds from the doctor, right? Snaps. And he's just picked up something and is swinging and stabbing. Really? You think you're just going to snap in hell. Okay. So how do you handle that? Right. Um, and of course that bleeds into emotional and all that. Right. But this is, this is, what do you think you can do? What do you think their skill set is? All those kind of things, right? What's their logic? What's their style of fighting? That's a head thing. It manifests here, but the strategy for how they're going to move their body and what their favorite techniques are and what 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 those things are and, and what they're used to practicing and all that, right? That's here. Their philosophy about why they would be attacking you, right? Your philosophy or predetermined um, uh, mental plans about when you'll engage, when you won't engage, right? Things that are going on in your head right here, like I, I mentioned a couple of times, right? My wife, my kids, or my, my three-year-old grandson, right? It's right there, right? What do, you, what do you think that's going to do, right? 
How, 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 how do you position yourself correctly against this incoming threat? Because we just keep adding shit, don't we? We just keep adding stuff, right? What's the logic, right? Those kind of things, right? Emotional, okay? Emotional, right? Are you uh, unafraid? And I know everybody likes to assume that they're going to be unafraid, right? Not shit in their pants, those kind of things, right? Are you unafraid, right? Are you uh, anxious, right? Emotionally overwhelmed, right? Like that oh shit moment kind of thing, right? Are you pissed, right? Uh, are you, or do you have like a fear based kind of thing that I got to get him first, right? Before he touches me, whatever, right? Are you evasive, right? That's also up here mentally too, okay? Mental, fudoshin. Right. Immovable heart. Okay, Keeping my mind still and my ability to do that or not do that. Right. I might think that I can do it because the dojo, see, I got my shit together. Next thing you know, somebody jumps off a freaking motorcycle and starts coming at me. And all of a sudden, right, I'm the little girl they've been looking for. Right. Anyway. Right. So we start people in module one. Very first day of training. Right. A lot of people are running around the Bujikan going, ah, see, Stephen Hayes made up all that Godai stuff. We don't do the elements. We don't do, you know, this thing. The, the Godai elements are a way to classify things for ease of learning, right? It's a classification system based on context, right? Mental context, right? If I read something, right? Read something in the news, right? I love people who get their news based on sound bites because somebody will go, uh, this guy said this. What an asshole. But then you go back. If you're smart, if you're a ninja, you go back and you watch the whole news thing and you realize that that was a couple of words out of a whole context right here. And they took it out so they could spin it and sell you something and manipulate the shit out of you. Right. So but context, right. Context is kudai dori for the written word. Right. Context means everything. OK. So uh, but again, emotional. Right. So we give everybody options and ways of looking at things because these emotional drivers, right? These emotions actually cause muscles to fire in your body that actually cause your spine to lock up in certain places and be open in others, which makes certain types of physical movement easy and conducive while other types of movement are very difficult. Okay. It's not like being in the dojo where there's no stressor, right? Okay. So can I deal with this guy who's coming in? How would I deal with the same attack, same attacker or whatever, if it's somebody or not maybe same attacker, but same attack or whatever. So it's the same physical thing, right? How would that technique manifest or how, where would, how would I position myself if take your best shot if I'm that way or if I'm, if I'm in this kind of position, right? Or if I'm in a, go ahead, right? Or if I'm a, you know, I don't want to fight kind of thing, right? Or I'm protecting my family or whatever, right? How, would, how are the techniques going to manifest? How am I going to position myself relative to that person? Taking proper position is more than just, most people approach martial arts like it's a, it's a basic kindergarten or first grade math problem. Two plus two always equals four because it's easy to learn it that way, okay? Way too many variables, way too many variables, right? Spiritual, right? Um, some of the stuff is going to cross over mental logic, all that kind of stuff, emotional, spiritual, right? Um, what's the, what's the connection between the two of us, right? Um, where am I, right? Not just, I mean, it, again, these things start to cross over, but right. What's my connection? Let's say I'm at a wedding at a church, right? For whatever reason, you know, I, I remember being, a. Uh, not the best man, but I was one of the groomsmen for one of my black belts. And we're right up at the altar, right? And there's always that inevitable question. Does anyone here have any reason why these two, da, 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 you know, if so, you know, speak now or forever hold your peace, blah, blah, blah. It's amazing how people don't say anything in the church, but the moment they walk out, start talking shit about you for the rest of your life. Okay. Anyway, right. But what if something would have happened relative position right there? My friend, black belt. His wife was one of my students as well, right? Other family members, that kind of thing. Ministers right there, altars right here. 
my reverence for those kind of objects and that that kind of environment and whatnot, regardless of whether that's my denomination or anything, right? All that, right? It's all going to be kind of coming together, right? So anyway, there's all of these things, all of these things, right? So Kudai Dori, again, is not something that is so easily defined as it's uh, taking proper Komai. We're going to back up, right? Later on, you'll be able to go back and look at the recording of this thing and then take a snapshot. As a matter of fact, um, James uh, is probably, as this thing is going through or at the end of it, we'll have a worksheet made up for you down in the description. As always, there will be a link to uh, the, the notes, right? The worksheet for uh, for this class, right? So you can jump over on the website, click on the link, just jump over to the website, right? And, uh, and download that so you can add it to your notes, okay? So that's why I don't feel bad about erasing it. Let's start. Let's let's go full circle. We'll come right back to come I right and come back to something that's really, really, really simple, but maybe not as simple as it looks. Okay. Obviously, it's not an interactive class, so uh, I I can't just kind of open this up and go, hey. What does that word mean? What's a come on? Because it's not a stance. The word for stance in Japanese is dachi. They're named for two, two completely different aspects of the body. One is named after position of the legs. One is named after the position of the upper torso and the limbs. Conventionally, in Nijutsu, it's named after that plus mindset, plus emotion, plus attitude, plus, right? So... What is it to say, well, you know, kudai dori, right, is, is taking proper kumai. What is that? Well, it's all those other five things that I just freaking laid out and a whole bunch of other ones depending on the challenge or the, or the, the problem, right? So kumai, my new students get this right out of the gate. What's a kumai, okay? Kumai is very difficult to translate, but we're going to give it a good shot, okay? Because it's dynamic. And the definition, as I'm going to give you, touches physical, mental, emotional, da, da, da. Okay? Come on. Posture. Position. Position. Uh, attitude. Okay? No way to translate uh, my that I got from a... Uh, Japanese friend a long, long time ago who's a native. She's Japanese. So before you go, well, that's bullshit. That's not what my teacher said. I don't care what your teacher said. Okay. Um, I'm only sharing what it is that I learned and what people that, you know, anyway. So uh, I asked her and she didn't train in the martial arts. Had a perfect opportunity. Sitting over dinner. Here's somebody native Japanese. She worked for the Japanese consulate in Canada. Okay. And um, had a perfect opportunity, right? Not a martial artist, not biased to any given definition, native, obviously fluent in the language because that's what she's been doing since she was what, six months old, right? Okay. What's the definition of, you know, come on? What, how, do, how does the average Japanese person see come on? And the first words out of her mouth was, what kamai means to me is, oh, well, that expanded things because I was looking for a Western, a hardcore, this kind of thing, right? And what she said was, kamai is being aware of your condition. So now I have a question. Internal condition, heart, head, relationship condition. Problem, solution, condition, relative condition, trying to get to a goal I'm aiming for, the type of attack that's coming, okay? being aware of your condition. The more information you have, the easier or the more, the better chance of, of solving that, right? If you know two things, where you are and where you're trying to go. 
you know, these two things, the process of your training is to solve the gap. Because if you don't know where that is, where you won't look at that because, well, see, I don't want to look at all my ineptitudes and, and my ignorance and all that kind of stuff, right? I don't want to look at my fear. I don't want to look at, you know. You can't get there from not here. And if this is really, really freaking vague. Going on vacation. Where are you going? I don't know. I'm just going to jump in the car and start driving. You might have a good time. Probably get there faster so you can have an even better time if you knew what the hell you were doing. Okay? So if I know this and I know this, okay, this is him and everything else involved. This is me and my ability to operate in that bubble. What skills do I need? This eliminates, I don't like it. I don't like roll. I don't like leaving. I don't like that kind of training. I don't believe in that, right? I don't, I don't, I don't. The universe doesn't give a shit. As Hatsumi Sensei once said, and I wrote this down, if you cannot do what you cannot do, that means if you can't bring yourself to doing something, but you're also lacking the skill needed, right? If you cannot do when you must, you will die. Physically, mentally, emotionally, whatever. It's done. Okay. So next step, right? Uh, not going to be able to do it right now uh, if you're grabbing the worksheet or whatever. Um, but in, I don't know, a couple hours or whatever, the link should be down there. Once we get everything edited and, and the whole thing fleshed out and all that, there should be an end card on the end of this. You'll be able to go and take a look at that. Um, the, what we promised, the... Um, the uh, Uke Nagash, right? The blocking video, right? There might be another one over there, whatever, right? We'll have all the kind of stuff set up for you. The link to the worksheet will be down below, but right there's the URL, right? You can go there, join us on Friday, 6 p.m. Uh, Eastern Standard Time. What's that? Noon Pacific, whatever, right? For a 75 to 90 minute class where we're going to be diving into and what we're going to be working on on Friday is the drill is some drills and some relative physical kind of things, right? We're going to be working on physical environmental kudaidori. Next week, we're going to be working on emotional, spiritual, mental kudaidori. Still lots of physical training. But what we're attuning to is going to be different in each class, okay? So hopefully you'll jump on. It's like $4.99 for the class. I mean, for Christ, right? It's less than five bucks. Right? It's the cheapest you're ever going to train with me, but it's really, really deep stuff. We're going to, we're going to take a look at that stuff. And even if you got to work, whatever, a bunch of my guys, they just, they just sign up for it. And then we send you the recording, right? You get the recording forever. So there you go. Right. And anything else that we toss on top of that. Right. But if you are live, you'll be able to ask questions. I'll be able to watch your movement and see how you're doing. And I'll be able to give you direct feedback. Right. So anyway, uh, if this is, you know, if it's for you, great. If not, no harm, no foul. But again, this is part one of two. So don't forget next week, mark your calendar, 3 p.m. Eastern time uh, next week, next Wednesday. So we can look at part two of the Kudai Doty. And of course, you know, if you can't make it because of work, life, forgot, it's not that important until you remember at 3 a.m. and you got nothing better to do, whatever that thing is, right? You can always jump on, on YouTube and look at the recording. Okay, that's it. That's all I got for this week. I'll talk to you again next time. Be safe, train hard, enjoy the rest of your week. Talk to you soon.